when we are making the income and the impact that we truly desire, that we deserve, that we know we were put on this earth to attract, then life is just going to be so much more abundant for us in all areas. Welcome to the USG podcast. This is Julie. I am so excited for you to be here today for this conversation. Melissa, I have been thinking about this conversation for a long time. I so I'm so inspired by you, by the work you've done, your stand for women to really own their power. We're going to talk so much more about so you've so much that you've done in such a like amazing four best-selling books. You are the co-founder of She Launch, your number one podcast host, speaker, coach, like lady. <laughs> it's amazing. You are such a gift. Thank you for being here today. I'm really excited for this conversation. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to, to dive deep. Let's do it. So, I mean, there's a lot, you know, honestly, there's so many different questions I have for you, but I think let's start with She Launch and how you even, how did you get into this work and, and what was the impetus to start She Launch? Maybe we start it there and from there we'll just, we'll see where it goes. Yeah, perfect. So She Launch is the company that I co-founded with my husband, Nick Broadhurst, who's a, who is a musician and an entrepreneur. And one of the reasons we founded that company was because I was coaching one-on-one -on -one, and I was coaching so many women. I was doing business and life coaching. I actually started uh, health coaching, then I moved into life coaching, then I moved into business coaching. And I had so many women were coming to me and they were saying, how have you built this seven-figure empire online and how have you done it? Teach me everything. And so I started coaching people on how to do it was getting great results and that's how She Launch was born. So She Launch is the, this company, this amazing coaching company that teaches female coaches and consultants how to grow and start their dream online business and get it to six and seven figures without the burnout. And another driving force, like a huge why behind why I wanted to do this was not only because I wanted to help women create that, but I truly believe that when women are doing work that they love, when they are lit up by what they do, they are better mothers, they are better partners, they are better friends, they are the best version of themselves when they are fulfilled in that area of their life. And I know that's the case personally for me. Like when I feel fulfilled in my career, I am a better mother. I am a better wife. <laughs> I am a better friend. And when we are making the income and the impact that we truly desire, that we deserve, that we know we were put on this earth to attract, then life is just going to be so much more abundant for us in all areas. So that's where where it came from. That's where it was born. And we've got almost 200 students that have gone through now. They're huge results. It's been amazing. You know, some of them have came, come in having no business and uh, hitting their goals of making that, you know, some of them wanted to make $10,000 a month. Some of them are making 50, some of them making a hundred thousand. And it's just so beautiful to watch the evolution of these women. And I just feel so privileged that I get to support that. So it's probably the one of the most comprehensive business and mindset trainings. And that's a huge difference to us. It's not just business training. We give you all the tools and the strategies and all of that, but we also give you the mindset upgrades that need to happen to be a CEO and to call in this type of business. So there's business and mindset training and I just love it. Like literally coaching my girls is the highlight of my work week. And uh, we do live events as well and virtual events and I just love it so much. That you can feel the passion, Melissa, as you're speaking. And I didn't realize we started with a similar background. I got a similar to you, master's degree in health and wellness coaching and have been teaching a bit more life coaching and, and even business coaching. And I, I, I think I would imagine, I'm curious for you, I know for me, it was, you know, I realized we're a whole person. So the health is one aspect. There's the health of your mind, body, spirit. And one of the things I love, and we'll talk about all, you have so many great books, but you can feel the, I can feel the alignment for you, like really the passion and your excitement to help women to really step into 
their power and also to have this abundance in mindset as well. I think for, I know for me growing up as a, as a female, as a woman, that can sometimes be a belief that you have to change. Oh, absolutely. I feel like that's the only way to be. I feel like we need to get clear on what it is that we want and live in alignment with that. And we say no thank you to anything or any opportunity or any anyone that is not in alignment with that. Uh, when we're living out of alignment, that's when we feel resistance. That's when we feel friction in our life. Uh, it, so it's like almost a daily check-in. Like, am I living in alignment? Am I doing what feels true for me? Is is And, and whenever there is an, a niggle that is trying to say, mm, that's not really aligned for you, we can't ignore it. We have to listen to it and pivot. And ideally we want to pivot as fast as we can. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I am curious, just if we go back, maybe just for those who don't know you well, your life growing up, were there, did you know you wanted to get into this profession? Was there a time where maybe you struggled with mindset or something that you had to overcome? I'm curious if there was any impetus that kind of got you into this work. Definitely have struggled with mindset. I mean, I think everyone has the inner critic, every single person. I call it the inner mean girl. And that's that voice that says you're not good enough and you're not smart enough. And who do you think you are? So I've definitely been on, you know, that journey myself and I still am today. And it's a forever thing. You know, mastering your mindset is a forever thing. And the more that we practice it, the stronger and easier it gets. It's like any muscle. You know, you go to the gym and you do your squats, they're going to be hard on the first day. Um, but the more you do them, the better and stronger you'll get. And so I think for me, my dad is an entrepreneur. And I always knew that my life was not going to look like everybody else's. Always. I didn't know what that was I didn't know what that was going to look like. I didn't I had no idea, but I just always knew that I was a bit different and that I was not like the other kids. In primary school, um everyone, you know, played netball and you know, was academic. And yes, I was academic too, but I loved arts. I loved creating. I loved dancing. I loved performing. I loved singing. I loved being on stage. I loved, you know, that's that world. And then same in high school, I went to just a normal, uh, a normal high school, an all girls school. And again, like everyone was either academic and then you're, you're sporty, you know, you play in the netball team and you play in the, you, you, you swim in the swim team. And I was just like, I'm not, I was never like that. I just always wanted to be performing and creating and using my body and my voice. And so growing up with that, I always just knew I was different in that sense. And having a dad who was an entrepreneur, like, and getting, seeing him, you know, create the hours that he wanted to work and not go to a job that he had to be there at nine and he left at five. Like that was quite inspiring for me. And so, um, I just always knew that I was going to do something different. And, and yeah, like I said, I didn't know what that was going to look like, but I just knew it was not going to be the standard, you know, nine to five. I love that like you knew that early on and owned it, you know, I, and I think it's so cool to hear like when you pull the thread through and it's like, oh my gosh, you are living that. And to just, you know, I'd love to talk a little bit more about the inner mean girl. I know you have a whole book, literally the, the inner mean girl. And I wanted to ask you because, you know, in terms of, I think it's mastering your mean girl, silencing your inner critic. But this inner mean girl, anyone who's listening, you know, I will just say it, Melissa, like seeing you, you're stunning inside and out, inside and out. And to hear you're saying, I still struggle with that. There's a part of me that's like, really? Wow. Okay. If, if she is, we all are like we, but we, it, the truth is we do. I think it's part of the human condition. We'd love to hear what you have learned in terms of how to really identify it, and for anyone listening, how to start shifting it. Because 
what I've seen is it's it can affect our health, it can affect our wealth, it can affect our well-being. And I know you've done a lot of deep dive into this. Can you just like, I know it's a whole book, but maybe we can just talk a little bit. I think this is something that so many, so many, if not everybody can really relate to. Mm, absolutely. Every single person on this earth, men included, have an ego, have an inner critic, have an inner mean girl or an inner bad boy. And like I said before, that is the voice of doubt. It is the voice that says, you're never going to meet the guy. You're never going to get out of debt. You're never going to heal. You're never going to um, do X, Y, and Z. We all have that voice. Some people's is just a lot louder than others, right? Some people's volume is really turned up loud. And mine definitely was. But over the years, I have practiced mastering this voice so much that the volume's pretty low now and it still pops up, but I have the tools to be able to master it really quickly and come back to the truth of who I am, which is unconditional love. Come back into my heart. So get out of my head and back into my heart space. And so <clears throat> I have a process that I teach and I actually did a TED talk on this. And yes, my book, Mastering Your Mean Girl, um, it's such an amazing book. Like truly, it's, it's a game changer. And I teach this cast process. It's a four-step process that helps you come back to your heart space and get out of your head. And cast, the word, uh, the, each letter, it's an acronym. And each, I'll go through, actually, I'll go through each of them so I can um, explain it in real time. So C, uh, well, actually it's designed the whole premise of why I designed this is to cast aside your inner critic. So your true self can shine. Right. Beautiful. And so C stands for character. What we want to do is we want to create a character for that voice inside our head. So I want you to visualize it. What is, what does he or she look like? Is it you? Is it somebody else? What is their name? Give them a name. What are they wearing? Like mine is a little version of me that's wearing like a little red devil outfit and she's sitting on my right shoulder. That's what mine looks like. And I just call her my inner mean girl. But some people's, it's like their primary school librarian, you know, like it's just random. So you have to create a little character for that voice. So that's the C. Then the A in the cast process is awareness. You have to become aware of when she is speaking and when it is your truth. Okay. So usually she will speak to you in words. Your truth usually speaks to you in feelings. You know how someone's like, oh, why did you book the ticket to Bali? You're like, I don't know. I just had to do it. I just, something just came of me. That's your intuition. That's feeling, right? And that's your truth. And that usually comes through in feelings and not so much in dialogue. And then, uh, yeah, so you become aware, maybe you can write it down. So you can say something like my inner mean girl is telling me that no one is going to buy my offer or I may as well not even write the book or who do I think I am starting a podcast, you know? And so we write it down and then the S in the cast process stands for shut the door. We gently close the door. We gently shut the door on that thought. But what most people do, Julie, is they open the door, they let their inner mean girl come in and sleep over and wear their clothes and hang out for a couple of months or years or decades, eat all the food in the fridge, and they're an annoying roommate that is just always there. And so what I want to encourage everyone to do is close the door, shut the door on that voice. No, I'm not interested. I'm not interested in what you have to say. <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. And then T in the cast process stands for truth. You come back to the truth of who you are, which is unconditional love. So that process, I take myself through that process whenever my inner mean girl pops up to try and tell me something that is just not true. I literally do that. And the thing is, is women have between 60 and 80,000 thoughts a day. 80% of them are on repeat from the day before. And so a lot of them are just rinse and repeat, not even helpful, not even supportive. And so you might be taking yourself through that cast process 60 to 80,000 times a day. Men have around 40,000 thoughts a day. So like almost half than what we have. And so we have to work. We have to do that mastering maybe 60 to 80,000 times a day. But the more you do it, the stronger that muscle gets. 
And the quicker you will get at coming back to the truth of who you are. Okay. I love this process. I, <laughs> hold on. Before we even go back into this for a minute, I did not know. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. My husband honestly just doesn't seem to have as many thoughts. And I just, I mean, I, I, we joke. I thought, well, I'm an extrovert. He's an introvert. Maybe that's why. No, literally, like I've never heard that. I did not know that. And I literally have lived that. And I wonder, let us know, leave comments for in the, in the, in the description. Are you noticing this in your life? We're going to put that out there. That is so cool, Melissa. I didn't know that. And no wonder, no wonder. I mean, I, I've, I've experienced this real time. It's, it's, uh, it's no joke, the amount of thoughts yes. that we yeah, have. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. Like I'm almost a little bit jealous that they don't have as many as we do. <laughs> I am jealous. I, I mean, I don't love being in that energy, but I literally, I'm like, how are you so all the time seeming like, I don't know. I'll ask him. He's like, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm good. I'm like, you're not thinking anything? Like there's no. all the time. Okay. So love your framework so much. I love that it's simple. And I love this, like giving the name to it and, and really identifying it. And you know, when you said something at the end, I'd never really thought of it this way. It's like, if you had, if there was somebody who is not nice to you, you would not let them come over, wear your clothes, sleep in your bed. Like, no, we would have boundaries. It's actually mm -hmm. kind of creating a boundary within yourself with this part of yourself. That just came to me. It's like, that's, I love this because you're great at, you're getting that character, that awareness. And then you're saying no thanks and coming, rewiring back to your truth. But it's like, creating a boundary. It's like saying, no, I'm not going to do that. Yes, absolutely. And healthy boundaries are so important. And like you said, Ooh. you would do that with other people. You would not let someone who spoke to you like that in your yeah. house and to hang out and come over every day and sleep over. Yet you allow yourself to, to speak to yourself like that. So you are, sorry, yeah. you allow your inner mean girl to speak to you like that. It's not yeah. okay. We have to put a boundary in place and say it's self-love. Like truly it's worthiness and it's self-love. And when you, yeah. when you really love yourself and when your worthy is dialed right up to a 10 out of 10 on the worthy scale, then you won't speak to yourself like that. Absolutely. I love that worthy -ometer. That's so good. Oh my gosh. Love it. Well, and I'm just even thinking first though, and it reminds me of if you've ever done support groups or other kinds of any change, that awareness is crucial. So that's got to be in there. Like you have that right up front. You have to have awareness that it's happening and then you can do something about it. So I, I think this is so brilliant. I want to ask you, I know one of your books, I love the name. We both, I love like I make up names and I was like, oh my God, comparisonitis. Like I love this. I love this. And I'm Real time, one of my questions, and would love to talk a little bit about that too. So let's say for someone who is looking to be an entrepreneur, maybe they have a certification, they're going to be using their skills that they've used in their business, and they're going to go out on their own. I know many women that have done that, right? A friend who's in HR, she's going to start her own business. And then the thought comes in, like, I have no sales experience. I'm not good at this. And then we get into comparisonitis, like okay, this person knows how to do that, does it better. So how do those play together? Because I have a feeling they're kind of like have a relationship, the men are mean girl and the part of us that compares. Can mm -hmm. we talk about comparison? Because I actually think this is literally one of the things that can just stop your passion in its tracks, stop you mm -hmm. in your tracks. And I just, I want to hear what you know, just spill all of what you know, Melissa. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, comparison is rife. I think more than ever with social media, Yes, like suicide rates have gone up can just shockingly anxiety, depression, suicide rates in young girls has gone through the roof since you know, social media. And we have to remember that social media is the highlight reel. I think we all know that, but do we really, really know that? We forget it and we look and we're looking and we're scrolling and we're thinking that this person's life is perfect. And that is how social media is designed. 
it is designed to, you know, make you think that. And so we need to be aware of it. You know, that quote by Theodore Roosevelt, uh, comparison is the thief of joy, and it truly is. And, you know, there's so many different areas we can compare. We compare our career and how much we're making. We compare our relationships. We compare parenting. We compare our health, like our bodies. We can compare in any area. And what I know is the more that you compare, the more unhappy you are going to be. And so instead of comparing and making it mean that something is less valuable about yourself, we can look at other people as inspiration and motivation. So look at what they have and we can flip it from envy and jealousy to and and lack to expansion. So, oh, if they can do that, so can I. That is literally how I had my dream home birth with my daughter. I literally saw other women having home births. I watched videos of other women, same age as me, giving birth at home uh, in the water. And I was like, if they can do it, I can do it. I was like, sure, I can do it. That's how I had my birth. When other women were starting businesses, I saw other women having online businesses and making X amount of money. And I was like, if they can do it, I can do it. That is, you know, use it as inspiration, as motivation, uh, because the alternative is making it mean something less about you. And that is not a fun place to be in. So instead of making it mean that, we want to use it as inspiration, as motivation, as fuel. And become aware of when you're comparing, like, who do you compare yourself to? Is it people in business? Is it people with their bodies? Is it people having kids? Is it married couples? Like, where do you compare? All of the above. (laughs) All of the above. Right. And then also, you also have to set healthy boundaries for yourself. Like, whilst you are in the weeds of this, you need to maybe mute some accounts, maybe unfollow some accounts that are making you compare and instead just fill your feed with inspiration and motivation, positivity, lightness, you know, travel, you know, travel things or whatever it is, but become aware of like where you're comparing, what area you're comparing um, and put some healthy boundaries in place to support yourself until you feel really strong and good within yourself um, and just always flip, like notice, become aware, like in the cast process, you've got to become aware of like when you're comparing and what you're comparing about. And then you have a choice to either let that mean you're less than or you're not good enough or use it as fuel, inspiration and motivation, which is what I do. Beautiful. I have a question about this and and I tend to like to go a little bit into the spiritual end of the pool. But as you're speaking, I first of all want to say bravo and and this like seriously for ever, anyone listening right now if you're triggered because this is what I'm hearing you say Melissa and I cannot agree more. There's no shame if there's somebody or someone's account that is triggering you. First of all, it might be interesting like you said get aware, get curious. However, also, if if it doesn't feel good, you can mute or block. It is okay. Um, I, I have noticed we, we have elections coming over here soon. You probably heard about that. Yes. <laughs> and there's a lot going. I mean, this can go in so many different areas. And I just made a decision. Like when I'm on social media, I want it to be loving, full of light and encouragement and positivity and maybe a little bit of like you know, I love watching people that bake stuff. That's just fun (laughs) or design. So fun and lighthearted. And I just realized there's some accounts and I just said, bless and release you. Like I I don't, it's not making me feel good. And this reminds me what you said about intuition. It's feeling. So I love what you said. Like there's no shame in doing that. If that's going to help you to stay in your lane. That's what I'm hearing you say is having, I think we're back in the boundaries conversation, Mm -hmm. which is so loving. It goes back to what you said earlier about self-love. I love that you said that. I am wondering in terms of spiritually speaking, something because, you know, in this entrepreneurial space, it can be 
I mean, it's something to keep in your own lane and not, you know, there's a lot of people showing the highlight reels, right? And so personally, I love to give hearts and be like, heart to them, heart to them, heart to them. And every now and then I'm like, oh, wish I was there. I was doing that. Something that's helped me a lot is connecting spiritually. I'm curious for you, like how spiritual connection can also be something to lean on or what works for you, whatever that looks like. Um, Cause I know just connecting to your intuition, connecting to your heart, you mentioned earlier, spiritual meaning like your, you know, not just your head, but that greater part of us. Mm-hmm. Yes. I have such a deep connection to, you know, the greater power, the universe, God, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I think that gives me such purpose and such comfort to have that. Uh, and I think in today's world with so much noise, we need to stop, get quiet, still, and connect within and to that higher power, whatever it is for you, God, unconditional love, the universe, because when we do that, that's when the answers come flooding in. That's when we can hear our intuition. But if we are just running all day long, distracted by our devices, moving from one thing to the next, there's no room for your intuition to speak to you. And so it's so important, whether that is, you know, just sitting for a few minutes before you get out of bed, sitting at the end of the day in bed before you go to sleep and just reflecting and journaling and meditating, praying, breath work, whatever it is. Those practices are so important, so vital, so necessary in today's world. And it's not a once a week thing. It's a daily thing. Like the, I wake up, the first thing I do is, well, I check the time. <laughs> I've got a watch next to my bed. I check the time. I do not have my phone in my bedroom. I have a watch. So I roll over and I check the time and I sit up and I meditate and I pray and I visualize and I, you know, some, repeat some affirmations. And that for me is like my anchoring. And then I do it again in the evening. Um, and then I add in some journaling in the evening. So I have a beautiful journal. It's called the Holy Mama Journal. I actually created it. It's a beautiful journal for mothers to just kind of stop and reflect and write down what we're grateful for. And um, I do that as well in the evening. And it just is a really nice way to bookend my day with connection to myself and to my higher power. Okay. So I just wanted to pause really quickly and let you know that it is actually not too late to join Intuition School. If you've been on the fence, if you are thinking, shoot, I wish I had done it. It already started. You can still join us. Every class is recorded. We have only met once. You're going to have access to all of the modules, all of the recordings for life, including the worksheets, the slides, the groundings, meditations. So my friend, if you would like to unlock your intuition to truly learn how to let go of indecision, analysis, paralysis, self-doubt, I'm going to teach you sure ways for you to learn how to build a, an incredibly powerful relationship within yourself. And by the way, this is a healing and self-loving path, 100%. So if you'd like to increase your psychic abilities and have full-blown access to your intuition, go check out Intuition School, julieriesler.com slash intuition school. Be sure to use the code podcast97 to get $97 off. You are not too late. We'd love to have you. Let me know if you have any questions. And if this is a leaning in soul, yes, I hope to see you in intuition school soon. So beautiful. We are so aligned. I was going to ask you literally, can you share your practices daily and, and evening? And I'm, we'll make sure to have the link to your Holy Mama journal. I saw it. It's gorgeous. It, you. Everything you do has such a beauty, it's such beauty to it. And um, I love the fact you know, not having the phone. I was going to ask you because I know you have a daughter, you have 
a baby on the way, like you've got a full life. You know, you're not just sitting at home or just doing this business. Like you also, you have your husband, you've got, you've got a lot going on. And so hearing that you're making time for that, you know, to me, I, I think that's fantastic. And what I've seen, you know, I'm sure I know you have a beautiful podcast as well. I've interviewed so many luminaries and teachers and this is what I hear from everyone is starting with meditation, having some sort of journaling, prayer, like what you're saying, Melissa, I'm not surprised. And I'll tell you, when we first connected right away, I was like, this woman is in her heart. I could feel mm-hmm. you. You were in your heart. You were like, you're, you're living and, and you're, you know, you're walking the talk of what you're saying. I can, mm-hmm. I, can I know that. So, oh, thank you so much. That's, um, thank you for seeing me. Um, that's really beautiful. Yeah. And like, we've yeah. never even met in person. And I think it's all, it's always beautiful to hear that reflection just through email and text and like through the internet, you know, it's, yeah. it's so easy to feel someone's essence in person, but to yeah. even get it through email is just even better. Like that just is really beautiful to hear. So thank you for that reflection. And, you know, like I'm a working mom, right? And I, my morning routine and my day looks so different. I have a toddler and another one on the re- on the way. I have a three and a half year old. I have an 18 year old stepson. I have a three and a half year old daughter. I have another one on the way. My morning routine looks so different. Like I used to spend hours in the morning for myself. I would have a sauna. I would go to an hour workout class. I would meditate for 20 minutes. And those things are delicious and luxurious. And definitely, if you can fit them into your life, do it 100%. But the reality for me at this season of my life, a 20-minute meditation with some prayer and visualization at the end in the morning, if I get that, I am high-fiving myself the entire way to the kitchen in the morning. Like, I am, like, so happy. Um... And then in the evening, you know, a couple of minutes to journal and to just reflect and, you know, that's it. And and then I, you know, I work out in the day and I make sure I get into nature every day. Again, that's really important for me to get sun on my skin, like to see the sunshine, like that's really important. Get outside, get my feet in the grass or the sand or something like that. That's really important for me. And then also uh, movement, like moving my body. And then that's, you know, nourishing my body with clean water and food. That's an absolute given. Going to bed early, getting good sleep. Like all of these things, they fill me up and they allow me to show up and be the best version of myself. Um, But I don't want anyone to think that you have to have like a three-hour morning routine to be successful and content. It's you, you just got to fit in what you can fit in. Uh, in with the season of life that you're in um, and be okay with like, okay, I'm getting my 20 minute meditation in the morning. And then whatever happens after that, if I have time and the babies are still sleeping and I can journal, great. If I can work out, you know, otherwise you work out with them. The thing is, this is what I've learned is like, I used to always try and work out before she woke up in the morning. And that was becoming a little tiny bit stressful for me because I was like rushing my workout. Um, and I realized that I can't meditate when she's with me, but I can work out when she's with me. So I will always meditate as a number one priority. And then like, if she's still asleep and I can work out before she wakes up, great. If not, I'll do it when she's awake. She loves watching me and she does it with me and she has so, so much fun. Like, you know, you just got to make it work. Yeah. I think that, it, that in itself, and that's going to look different. Like you said, I really love this reminder, depending on the season, you know, we spoke before we started recording and I was saying, you know, my kids in, are in their later teens already. So it, it looks very different now than when they were your, you know, young toddlers, very yeah. different. Um, I still don't have three hours every morning, but there are some times I can now, which is like, I still kind of pinch myself, but that's the season it's changing, you know, and, and we, rather than fighting it, I love what you said. You realize, wait a minute, let me shift. Let me flow with where I am. And my daughter can be with me while I'm exercising, working out, meditating, not so much, but, (laughs) but the working out she can, which is such a great message for her too. When you, I have a quick question with the visualization, because I just, sometimes I get questions I can tell, I hear people wanting to ask and I 
am curious with the visualization. Is it something that you are listening to, Melissa, or are you are you visualizing the day, the year, your business, your greatest like goal? Like, tell us a little more. What do you visualize after your, you know, meditation and prayer? What does that look like for you? I'm de- I'm not listening to something. I will just um, at the end of my meditation, which is a very expansive place. Like I practice Vedic meditation. I'm actually um, a teacher. Like I I studied it so that I can teach it. But I didn't uh, I didn't ever want to teach it. I just wanted to have the wisdom within me. And so I after you meditate for 20 minutes, you are in such an expansive state that that is such a beautiful time to drop in any goals, to plant any seeds, to visualize your goals or your day or anything that you want to manifest. So I'll literally just do that. Like whatever, whatever is like, you know, I'm wanting to manifest at that time in my life. Like for me, one of them is visualizing my, my next birth. You know, I'm giving birth in a couple of months. So I'll like see myself in our new home and we're also building a house right now, our dream home. Um, so I'll see myself just quickly, like visualize myself in the home birthing, uh, what time of day it is. Um, you know, just doing that and then visualizing a couple of business goals um, and then visualizing uh, just being with my family and, and the feeling of love and joy and adventure and play, you know, with my daughter and my husband. Just there's no real set thing. I kind of just visualize whatever it is that I'm wanting to manifest in my life at that time. Um, and then I also pray and I hand over you know, things to, to God, I hand over, you know, whatever is stressing. I, I, you know, I say, I I hand over my stresses, my worries, my anxieties about X or whatever it is. And I hand that over and, um, release it and let it go and, you know, let go of anything that's no longer serving me. And it's just such a nice little beautiful practice. And like, look, if you don't even have that time to do that, do it while you're in the shower. You know, you can even say it out loud in the shower or while you're, you know, brushing your teeth, you can say it in your mind, but it's just such a little powerful thing to do to really set you up. And I also love vision boards. If you want to create a vision board to help you stay in alignment with your goals and your vision, it's also another beautiful thing that you can do. Um, but I definitely, like I get my girls inside She Launch to visualize themselves achieving their goal. Like, where are they? Um, like one we recently did was because we're coming up to the end of the year, I got them to close their eyes and see themselves at the end of the year, like on the last day of December, high-fiving someone. Who are you high-fiving? Where are you? Because you've, and, and what are you high-fiving about? Like, what is the, the goal that you've hit? Um, that you're celebrating and who are you celebrating with and where are you and what are you wearing and what are the smells and, you know, and I get them to, I walk them through this powerful visualization and all of them are just like, oh my gosh. And do you know what? Like so many of them actually tell me when I take them through this exercise, they tell me that they achieve it before they've already achieved it before it's um, even the end of December, which is a couple of months away from when we're recording this. And because, and that, that's the power of visualization, right? So I love it, you know, and it's not just about visualizing it. It's about taking in action every single day as well to make that manifest. It's not just about visualizing and sitting back and watching Netflix all day. That's not how it works. <laughs> you got to visualize and then also take action every single day toward that goal. Um, and yeah, lots of them achieve that goal before the end of the year, which is so amazing. So cool. And I think for you, it's funny, almost as like, I'm seeing you, you're in the mother role with your daughter and, and baby to be. And then there's this like almost mother role is sort of like you're, I can just tell you really care so deeply about these women and then helping them usually using the practice that you're using to visualize their goal and how cool that you're seeing those like pop here and pop there and, and come to fruition. I, I know there's there's nothing greater than helping someone else achieve their goal. That is like the best feeling. Do you have any um, any examples of through She Launch and what you've done where 
maybe there's somebody who wasn't sure, felt they doubted themselves, and maybe to just share, you know, a success story that you've seen with, you can use a name or not, whatever feels good to you. So I have so many. I have so many. I was going to say, probably many. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And I have so many women. So we've had um, almost 200 clients come through and I have so many stories of like a common theme between some of these women is um, for a, a couple of them, it's like they come in and they're so scared to put themselves out there and their offer out there out of, you know, what, what if no one buys it? What if it's not good enough? So there's a lot of self doubt. There's a lot of worthiness and we do a lot of the mindset stuff. They end up working through that. They end up putting the, their offer out there and making more than what they had set out to make, you know, whether that's 10,000, 20,000 or $30,000 a month. Uh, and it's just so beautiful and wonderful to, to witness that. I just absolutely love it. But there is like the women that come in, I, the women that I attract, they're all driven. They're all self-led. They're very motivated. They want it so bad. They just need a couple of tweaks in their mindset to help them go to the next level and the tools and the strategies, you know, to grow their business, which is what we teach as well. So there's so many amazing stories. And then there's people that come in that are already making, you know, $50,000 a month and they want to go to a hundred. And it's just so beautiful to watch, you know, these tiny little tweaks in their business or their mindset. And then they just skyrocket. It's awesome. Can we talk about some of these mindset tweaks? I would love to, whatever you feel comfortable, whatever you'd like to share. What have you noticed are some of the most important mindset tweaks that have really made the biggest difference? Oh, there's, there's a couple of really big ones, but I think one of the biggest ones is worthiness. They don't feel worthy of charging a premium price for their product. They don't feel worthy of that abundance. And this is usually stemmed from something that happened in their childhood or maybe something someone said to them. So we really get them to look at, shine light on that. And maybe they've never shone light on it before. And for them, it's like this huge aha awakening moment where they're like, oh my, I've been holding myself back for so many years because of that story and that belief. And I'm just ready to let that go now. I am done. I am done. I am ready to let that go. And so that worthiness piece is such a huge piece because that is under every other limiting belief. Like I can't put myself out on social media. Like I, I'm, you know, I don't want to put my face on social media. Like under that is I don't feel worthy, you know, like, and so the worthiness piece is such a big piece. So I get them to really look at that. You know, we dial back up that worthyometer, um, you know, reminding them that they are worthy of all of the abundance and the impact that they want in this lifetime. Beautiful. So, so powerful. So the worthiness, it's, it's really interesting. It's like the root of it all is you're seeing this lack of worthiness and it might show up in how you're charging it. And, you know, Melissa, I have to say it's, I was just talking to someone today, um, who I have a coaching certification and I'm like, oh my gosh, I should have my coaches go through your program when they're done, <laughs> because there's a lot of times like, who am I to charge this? Right. And, and let's just take, for example, the coaching field. I mean, I'm sure you've seen there's a wide variety of what people charge. And, and I, I, you know, I was saying to this, um, friend and, and person who mentor coaches with me, we were talking about it and she was just saying like, it's so interesting. It's, it's literally what you were saying about worthiness and how important it is to, to own your worth. And for women, I always say this, I don't know if we would have this conversation I mean, maybe with some men, maybe some men, sure. I know some men deal with this too, but not at the same level. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Like they're not thinking, am I, <laughs> can I charge this? And, and the truth is that, you know, money being an energy exchange, it, it, it's, if, I, I'm curious what you see with not just the coaching field, but helping someone to really own 
their mindset around financial abundance. I think money, scarcity, fear, it's kind of like a subcategory with worthiness. But can we talk about that for a minute? Yes, 100%. So there's a whole module inside she launch on mindset and one of them in one of the modules inside that is about money mindset it's huge it is huge and we need to look at it we need to look at the money stories that we're playing the money beliefs we need to address it because so many people have outdated inherited old money stories that aren't actually theirs and when you address that and you come back to the truth of who you are and to the truth of about money um then that's when you start to call in the abundance that you deserve and you desire. And I see it time and time again with women, you know, they might not be reaching their income goals. And then when you dig deep, it's because of these money stories that they're telling themselves um, that I possibly can't charge this or that money's hard to come by or or you got to work hard for money or whatever it is. So it's very important that you look at the stories that you're telling yourself about money and you upgrade them and you address it. Otherwise you are never going to break through that glass ceiling to the next level of income that you truly desire. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think of it this way. I always, I I think of this example because I don't know if you've gone to acupuncture before, but when you go to acupuncture, someone's putting needles in your body. (laughs) So I, I typically look for someone who's charging quite a bit. (laughs) Like I want someone who is confident, has done this, knows what they're doing, is well-trained. And I think of, well, coaching the world we're in and also a lot of healing professions, I think of it like acupuncture, but with words and energy and the container you create, it's the same kind of thing. It's okay, not a needle, but the way you're holding space, it's, it's to me, that is everything, you know, having mm-hmm. someone that can hold that for you. Um, so I'm curious, thinking about my own self, I always laugh, like the more an acupuncturist charges, I'm usually like, yeah, I feel better about that. <laughs> um <laughs> With the upgrade, can you give an example? We've talked about money mindset a bit on the show, but I know that you've been around this so much and you've worked with so many women. Is there, are there a couple maybe, you know, untruths, like beliefs that you see over and over again and you're like, okay, we got to stop this one. Like I'm seeing this one and that one. Maybe you can shed light on maybe give an example, how would you upgrade that belief if Mm -hmm. if that's okay? Yes, absolutely. So I teach this inside the program. Um, And what we'll do is if everyone, if you're not driving, I want everybody to write down what the current stories are that they're telling themselves about money. So money is hard to come by. You've got to work hard for money. Um, The more I earn, the less time I'll have. rich people have no friends. Everyone will hate me if I have more money. Like whatever the story is that is going on in your head, write them down. And you might have one or you might have five different ones. It doesn't matter. So we first have to become aware this is this is shining light on something that has been dark for many years, possibly potentially dark for many years. And so we write it down. And then next to it, we say, where did this come from? Is that my dad's? Did my dad used to say money doesn't grow on trees? Did my did my school teacher like where did it come from? So you write down because a lot of our stories, not just about money, but a lot of our beliefs and stories are inherited from our parents. And so we then, with that realization, get to choose what we want to believe. And when I had this realization, I was like, wow, that's so awesome. For so many, for 24 years, I have lived by my dad's money beliefs and now I get to choose my own. And for me, it was exciting. I was like, wow, what do I believe about money? And so we write down who, that's step two, you write down where did this come from? Then step three is you ask yourself, if this is a yes or no question, do I believe this? Is this true? And you write yes or you write no. Most of them you'll be like, no, 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 no. And then the fourth step is what do I believe about money? I believe money is energy. I believe we use money in exchange for something that we value. I believe that we 
are abundant beings and money flows effortlessly to us for that which is true for us. What do you believe? And then you write those down and then you tattoo them to your forehead. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) You stick them, you stick them on your bathroom mirror. You put them in the notes section of your phone. You put them around your house. You tell your partner, you tell your closest people to you that these are your new money beliefs. And will they help hold you accountable if they wouldn't mind? And so next time you fall into maybe a little, oh, money's hard to come by or you got to work hard for money, you know, you can remind yourself, but maybe even they can lovingly remind you as well. Hey, that's not one of your new beliefs. Put it somewhere where you can see it and remember it every single day. And whenever it pops up and whenever the old one pops up, you go, that's not mine anymore. That's not mine. And you repeat your new upgraded abundant money mindset beliefs. That is how we change our beliefs. That is how we reprogram. And it's a daily practice. It's kind of like mastering your mingle. It's a daily practice. The more you do it, the quicker and stronger that muscle is going to get. Oh, I love it. I love this is so practical. And I'm just letting everyone know this will all be written out in the show notes. Melissa, this is super helpful. You're so gracious because I know you teach this in your program. Thank you for going through the steps. And um, that, that makes a lot of sense. I'm like, yep, make sure you get accountability. Cause I think that's where some of us forget and we try to do it ourselves and it's helpful to have somebody there and it's daily. I love that reminder. These are like changes we make are not overnight. It's daily. It's daily. I am curious be, before we close, I want to ask, what are you like, what are you most excited for I mean, in addition to having another baby, of course, what in your, the work that you're doing, when you think about, you know, the impact of what you're doing, what, what excites you most? What is, what is that, uh, what is that passion about? What does that feel like? What does that look like for you now? I'm so excited to watch my girls succeed and to get the messages where they're like, I had my biggest month yet. I made $20,000 or $50,000 or $10,000, whatever their goal was. Like, I am so excited for more of that. And we've got retreats, we've got live events, we've got a mastermind, all of all these amazing fun things planned for next year and beyond. And so I'm excited for all of that as well. But truly, like, I just love working with these women. Like, our coaching calls, every week are the highlight of my work week. I just love it. So more of all of that. Beautiful. You can feel it. Oh my gosh, coming out of you. I want to ask you if we, so on the show, we call them, I call them heart flares where your heart, maybe I didn't ask you something or your heart has something to share. That's just right there for you. So I always love to hand the mic to you. Anything that's there for you that you would like to share that, that I didn't ask her. That's like a a word of wisdom or something that you feel called to, to share. Take it away, Melissa. (laughs) Just a reminder that whatever it is that you want in your life, you are worthy of it. You deserve it and you can have it. You don't have to choose motherhood or business, you can have both and you get to decide how it looks. I have created a life that feels so in alignment with me and it might not, you know, be desirable to someone else, but it feels good for me and it actually doesn't matter. What matters is I've created what feels good for me and you can absolutely too and you're worthy of it. You deserve it and it is totally possible. I am going to like take this little part of the, our interview. And I think I'm going to just put it where I can hear that every day. I love just a, your accent, (laughs) (laughs) just the knowingness you've seen. And, and, and it's true. And it's, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that and love that. Like 
not only I just heard and you can have it all, you can have both. And you can have if you want the family and the business and the making an impact. And thank you for just being such a beautiful inside and out role model and inspiration for what's possible. I know you've built such a beautiful business and you've built, we didn't even get to relationships. We'll have to do another time, but I, <laughs> you've really built, you know, a dream, a life that, that is of your dreams and helping other women to do that to me is, is so powerful and needed. And I just appreciate who you are. You are your heart, how heart centered you are and the work you're doing in the world. It's, it's so, it's so necessary and it's powerful. Thank you. Mm, thank you so much for really seeing me. I feel so seen and mm. really grateful and so, so excited for everyone to listen to this. But thank you so much for holding space. You do so beautifully at that. I love that. So thank you. Thank you, Melissa. And I just, for all of you beautiful sisters and brothers, wherever you are around the world, make sure you check out everything. M Melissa, We'll have Ambrosini, all of her information, her links and the she launch and all of it, all of that will be both on YouTube and the description and the show notes. Make sure you check out her beautiful work and the Holy Mama journal, which I saw and was like, Holy Mama, I need one of those. <laughs> Even though I have older kids, doesn't matter. I'm always a mama. So I just, and I want to say thank you to everyone for being on this journey of really tapping into your heart and your highest self and being your USG you and just sending so much love and Melissa, so much love to you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Julie. It's been such a delight. Thank you.